So what I've got in the in the game plan before we actually start to try to get followers, I've talked here about setting up the profile, putting a little content. So I've talked about that uh, before trying to get followers because you don't have much to show for it. Uh, why would someone be interested in following your account? Obviously, you believe, well, my account's going to be amazing, and you, of course you should follow it. Well, we need to convince people of that. So setting up the account, biography, graphic, a little bit of content that's, that goes toward that. Let's talk about some other more tangible tactics to get followers. Now, this will apply on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and all of them. So we'll see these various things in, in different perspectives when we get to the different networks. So um, some tips to getting followers. I'm not saying you have to do all of these, and I'm not saying how many times do you have to do these things. I'm not saying you do, seven, you do this seven times and then it'll work for you. It really varies for a lot of reasons. There are a lot of variables. Are you the only brand in this space? Do you have other competitors in the same city or country? How active are you? Are your competitors, have they been around longer than you? There's just many factors, but we'll cover some strategies. So if um, when I said earlier about the business, if you don't know a business exists in the real world, how do you know to go to it? How do you know that it even exists? So one of the first things to do is make yourself known to those that might want to know you. Example, Victor's Bakery. Just by that name right there, what do you think they are about? What's that business about? Big goods, cookies, cupcakes, birthday cakes, whatever. So some keywords. What are some keywords that you might associate with a business called Victor's Bakery? Cake, cookies, birthday cake. OK, just some big, quick keywords. We can use the social networks to search these keywords to find people interested in those keywords so that we can let them know, hey, we exist. So we'll do this in a moment. The, way, the, the strategy is step one, determine keywords. Step two, search keywords and find users or you know, people, customers. Step three, make yourself known to them. And then that's going to be A, B, C in a moment. Well, this will apply on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram, on all the networks. I have to figure out some keywords. What, what is my business about? I'm selling maybe organic. I mean, maybe, my, my, maybe my cookies are using organic ingredients. Well, that's a keyword, organic ingredients. I'm um, a daycare center. Tell me, what are some keywords you might think about when, when you think about daycare center? Licensed. Licensed. <laughs> Friendly. Fun. Safe. Safe. Educational. Preschool. You know, whatever. These keywords that we figure out for a business. What are some keywords perhaps for a plumber? Plunger. Plunger. Sure. Anything else? Monkey wrench. Yes. Um, local. Local plumber. Affordable plumber, uh, maybe uh, condo, you know, condo-focused plumber. However, we can figure out the, the term. I, I live in a condo. I live in a three-story house. I live in a in a detached home. Maybe I'm going to search that way. That kind of plumber. So there are keywords for every kind of business that we would need to figure out. That you would need to figure out for your business. This is the part where I can't teach that. There's 30 people with their own business that are trying to get found. But in general, you're thinking about some amount of keywords. I'm not saying one or two or five is the answer. I'm saying some amount of keywords. Next, we will do search. We'll do this in a moment together. You're actually going to search in the network, not on Google, not on Yahoo, not on Bing, not in a search engine. In the network, you're going to search these keywords because you get different results. If you search on Google, that's searching all over the world. 
If you search in Twitter, you're only searching in Twitter. You're only searching for potential customers in Twitter. If you search on Yahoo, that's going to search all over the world, which might not be relevant. And the make yourself known, I'll explain that in a moment. Let's actually try this out. I'm in Twitter. On the top right corner, I see search in Twitter. This is not going to be a search on the regular web. This is going to be a search in Twitter. So I'm just going to search for cookies. And I'll press Enter. <laughs> Twitter then shows top results with that keyword, latest results, people related to that result, photos or videos or news or live broadcasts related to that result. At the moment, the top result comes from Cookie Monster, the official Cookie Monster. And it's a photo there. Then we see some other ones over here from Boomerang. And food zone. Okay, I see tweets about that keyword, cookies. See how it's highlighted. If I look at latest, well, this is going to be updated on a regular basis. 17 seconds ago, Paula Greaves um, tweeted this saying, This is a bit much for two cookies, don't you think, McDonald's? Hashtag fail. And then 17 seconds ago, also, uh, Katie said this. Now, I do want to say before I go further, since this is a completely public forum, if anything weird or untoward appears, it's not my fault. It's, it's their fault. People are tweeting out there publicly into the world. So, But we're grown-ups, and so we can handle it. So in the time that I've been talking, 13 new tweets have suddenly popped up here regarding cookies. So this is a constant stream of people using that keyword, cookies. That doesn't mean I found 13 new customers, really. It just means that 13 new tweets have popped out of people uh, saying the keyword cookie somehow. So my strategy here, OK, search keywords and find users or people or customers regarding that topic. Make yourself known. The make yourself known is like their content, in this case, tweet, or uh, reshare their content or um, reply to their content or this sounds familiar from what I said earlier so what was the fourth item here follow mm -hmm. any of these actions fits any of these actions fulfills what I'm saying here. Make yourself known to them. They don't know that I am a boutique cookie shop that they might be interested in. They're tweeting, they seem to be tweeting about cookies. They seem to have an interest about cookies. They might want to know about me. They might want to know that I'm selling cookies right now, 50% off. I've identified people that are tweeting about a topic that my business is. So by simply liking one of their tweets, the one that we identify, they will get a notification that says, Victor's Bakery liked your tweet. All of these networks have some sort of way to notify you of activity. Um, for example, just as a, an example, perhaps for someone over here. Um, OK, so Tiara is saying, the cookie dough flavor is back at Dunkin'. Two minutes ago, she tweeted saying, apparently she really likes the cookie dough flavor at Dunkin' Donuts. Well, I, as Victor's Bakery, let's say, could click the little heart, which is the like, uh, and then Tiara will get a notification in her Twitter that says, Victor's Bakery, like your tweet. At the very minimum, she is made aware that I exist. Best case scenario? Then she goes to my profile, sees all of the photos about cookies and all that stuff, and clicks follow. Best, best, best case scenario, she buys something. Worst case scenario, nothing happens. She didn't see it, or she ignored it. No problem, I have, I have 70 new tweets to try to, to, to capitalize upon. Question? What's the strategy to do this without annoying? I'm gonna be I'm gonna be covering that, yeah. I'm gonna get into that, yeah. Yeah. But don't don't you wanna qualify the people that 
true liking. In other words, if PR only has three followers, but Chamomile Cookie has 10,000 followers, shouldn't I look at their profile before I decide whether or not I'm going to follow them and have to watch their... Yes, yes, I, I am. I am getting to the nuances. Yes, but yes, you you both are seeing ahead, one step ahead. Very good. But yes, that is the idea. Just by me simply clicking a like to whatever I like or whatever I see, that might not be the best result. That is one possibility of let me make someone aware that I'm on a certain topic. And the way that I that I put them here in this sort of order, perhaps, is a way to think about it in their value as well. Giving a like here and a like there, for me, is very low effort. I've clicked like, I've made them aware, they may then choose to follow me by my product. Uh, not, a, not a big investment. By me going to the next level up here, a value, a reshare, which is this one right here, well, what I'm doing is basically saying that I like your tweet so much that I'm going to copy it and paste it and share it to my followers. I'm going to forward it to my followers. Now, obviously, then, I don't want to forward someone's content that right now looks nice and sweet but then later on they're like some sort of crazy conspiracy nut so I do want to vet them I do want to further check on them a little bit about uh, what are you about should I follow you uh, are, are you really interested in this topic so it is much deeper than just I see something I do something yes I would go in and click their account and once again this is a public profile I don't know what I'll see but I click on that and I look what they're about and okay it seems that they're about what I thought so okay I will follow I will reply I will engage it is more useful to get more detailed but it is more effort if I have the next action of the reply okay yeah I am going to talk to a stranger you know your, your mother told you never to talk to strangers but on social media you can because I can click the reply and then start a conversation with Tiara now again, this one tweet is about the topic, but maybe her other tweets are about completely different things that I don't care about, or are offensive to me, or whatever. That's fine. You should do a little bit more of the, of the background check, a little bit more of the vetting to see what are they tweeting about. And notice if they did set up their profile, they get, you, you should hopefully get a little bit of a preview about what they're about, a graphic there, and uh, a little bit about herself, JMU alumna, Bible quote, followers, etc. So this is part of the purpose that you're filling out your biography so that you're not wasting people's time and you're showing here's what I'm about. If you follow me, if you interact with me, here's what you hope to see. Because then the follow, and a quick reminder if you haven't muted your devices, please mute your devices as well. But the last one here that I've got about the follow, yeah, that is the big investment. Just because a person is tweeting one time that I happen to see at this moment about cookies doesn't mean they're going to be an, a good follow. Because when you follow someone, then you're doing the opposite. You're saying, I like your stuff so much, I want to see it every time you post it on my home screen. Most likely you won't. So I put these in that order for that reason. The like is the least is the least um, investment is the least danger or effort for you in that yeah I like someone's tweet but most of the other tweets are irrelevant but that one about this topic I liked I made them aware of my product my brand they might then follow maybe they'll buy. The next level up, okay, I like their stuff so much, I'm going to share it. Well, hopefully you're sharing the content of those that will help your brand and not hurt it. And then, okay, I'm engaging. I'm actually going to talk to someone. I'm going to reach out from across the internet and reply and say, great job, great cookie, hey, how are you, whatever. I'm going to do some customer service in the real world. It is valuable when you walk into a store, you get help from the personnel there. Here you're doing customer service across the computer. And then the follow is, I would often say that's your last, that's your last choice of what to do. You probably don't want to follow so many people, especially if it's content of stuff all over the place. But the point is here of um, identifying uh, people that are interested in a topic and engaging. So best case scenario,
they reply, engage, follow, buy, whatever conversion is there. A reply is also a conversion. They were converted from a non-reply to a reply. A follow is a conversion. A buy is a conversion. They all got converted from not doing that to actually doing it. Question? Well, uh, what about location in the sense that well, the question sort of answers itself because yes, in terms of if I simply blindly just reply to people and I just reply to someone in England, okay, there's no value to that really. I would further do what I said earlier about, okay, let me look at their profile for a moment. Well, not that one, but let me look at their profile and see um, where are they located at and what... Uh, click. Yeah, it's one more click to, to go here and then actually see where they're at and, um, and then just a little bit of extra effort of a little bit of the vetting process. Okay, there, they seem to be local. Good. Then I will click a reply or a follow and then hopefully get that result. So best case scenario, they reply to you by. Worst case scenario. Worst case scenario. Nothing. They don't reply to you. They ignore you. Okay, maybe they can block you. Who cares? There's 300 other million users that I could uh, try to tap into. Uh, I suppose the most extreme example is that someone then reports you or blocks you. But uh, if you are being positive, if you're bringing positivity, if you're acting positively towards someone, there shouldn't be negativity coming back. My, someone might say, well, who's this Victor's Bakery? Ignore, block, move on. Who's this Victor's Bakery? I'm so annoyed by them, I'm going to report them. That I don't think really happens unless you are negative yourself. Um, just by being a commercial entity shouldn't really be that you get any negativity. It's if you're, if you're replying sarcastically and people don't get the sar your amazing sarcasm online. Maybe that's how I might hurt you. So be positive and you get positive back. Be funny or witty, and you get that back within the confines of your brand. I don't think they will take you very, very seriously for being jokey and funny and sarcastic as a lawyer, as a public accountant, as you know, one of these more serious businesses. Uh, so it depends on your brand and your audience and all of that, how you will communicate. So what I will do is I will actually try that. Let's see if we, this is what I might call like, uh, you know, baiting the hook. And like I'm going to be fishing, I'm going to try to get some results just to show it live in the class. I will search for cookies. Now this account that I'm using doesn't have anything to do really with cookies, but I'm just going to show you. Um, So it does take a little bit of browsing on your specific topic and then figuring out the um, figuring out the target audience. And again, depending on what um, your product is mm. okay so you know 
someone, someone is hungry for a cookie at the moment, so uh, I could uh, click simply a like, then they will be alerted that this account liked their, uh, their tweet. I could retweet it, I could reply to it. So uh, I won't actually send it, I guess. It doesn't quite, doesn't quite make sense. But if I was Victor's Bakery for real, I was like, I'd say something like, someone really needs a cookie today. You're in luck. We've got uh, lots of treats on sale today. And then victorsbakery.com. It's not a real link or anything. Um, tweet a cookie. HTML. And then I would attach a photo of the picture. So it is a very direct one on one form of marketing in that what if you're browsing a magazine and then suddenly in the magazine you, it says free cookie just call this phone number some people would do it some people wouldn't this is the same sort of thing but I'm doing it in the opposite way instead of being passive my ad is in that newspaper I'm being active I am trying to find those that would be interested in this topic and I'm gonna then be active so I won't actually reply but that'd be something like I would do depending on my business depending on the style of the of the business am I actually prepared to give away some you know free merchandise and such are they even local do I ship to them so it is more answers than more more questions more answers to that question but that's the idea here in general what I've got make yourself known to them if you don't want to take that step because I have it higher here in my ladder of value just a like if you spend 10 minutes a day, 5 minutes a day browsing Twitter a little bit, identifying people on a certain topic and clicking like on their tweet, that gets you some results as well. They will get the alert, Victor's Bakery, who are they? I see what they're about. Okay, I'll follow. Or I don't care, I won't follow. And spending a little bit of that time, a little bit a day, helps you. Remember over here when I had on that uh, strategy link, it broke it down in that way too. Post at least X tweets per day. Uh, retweet posts from influencers. Follow X number of people. Read articles. Make yourself known to those that might follow you. Here's another big idea. Follow the followers. The idea is search using a keyword or hashtag. We'll do a hashtag in a moment. Search using a, a keyword or hashtag, identify a big account, see their content, see who is active on their content, and then do what I had up there, which is then make yourself known to them. I'll show this in a moment, but the idea is, let's say I am Coca-Cola. I'm going to go look at what Pepsi is tweeting about. I'm then going to look at all of their tweets because it's all public. You can make your Twitter account private, but a, a company usually doesn't want to because then they want to reach as many customers as possible. So I'm Coke. I'm going to go look at Pepsi's tweets. Um, it will tell me seven people liked it. 12 people replied, 1,000 people followed, whatever. It'll tell me that. I can then further click and view who exactly liked it, who exactly replied. So I'm identifying those who are being active on a topic or a product that I'm related to. Then I can sort of snipe them. I can sort of steal them. I can sort of look at who are they and then, you know, butt into the conversation and me be part of it. 
let me actually show that like that. So if I, I can do search, or just as an example, I'll go to Pepsi. So below this tweet, there are 40 likes. This one's got 71 likes, 117, 98. This has got three replies, 24 replies, 11 replies. On all of these, I can then further uh, click on the tweet or the time of the tweet. Each network's a little different on how you actually do it, but for Twitter, for example, I can, I can click on, on the time and date that the tweet was tweeted for it to show me the full details. So if I view it like that, okay, so it shows it here, and then it shows here's all the people that replied, and then up here, I can click Show me the people that retweeted. Show me the people that liked. So here, perhaps, I'm filtering my effort a little. These are the people that liked that tweet so much that they shared it to more people. They might be interested in other cola-related products. Maybe I'm a boutique niche hipster cola that I make in my bathtub that I want to uh, also put out there for people. Well, I'm going to try to latch on to people that also like cola and maybe get a hold of them. Here's, here's the 351 people that liked that tweet. Yes, by simply clicking follow or simply clicking like, that's a little too far of a bridge to cross. I don't know what else they're, they're all about, and I don't know if their stuff will be weird or dumb or offensive. I still want to take the extra effort to open up their, their profile and check them out a little bit before I decide to actually go that far to like, reply, and such. So, what about these replies here? So, Regeman says, perma retro design, please. Um, Dark Knight says, can you bring back Pepsi Blue? Okay, so, this again, because it's a public thing, it's an anonymous thing, there is all over the place about positivity, negativity. Hopefully, you are uh, interacting in a positive way and trying to keep everything positive and it shouldn't devolve into negativity if you keep it positive. But here, um, okay, you're in luck. I could reply there, and, and if this is one of my products, luck would have it, I would say, oh, you're in luck. Victor's Brewery sells an amazing blue cola. Check it out. And then our, the link to the website or a photo or whatever. So if this person is serious and wants the new Pepsi, Pepsi Blue, whatever that was, and I've got a version of it, I might entice them to at the very least like my tweet, reply to my tweet, follow my account, better yet, buy my product. But it is a big leap from a like or reply to a sale. It's a huge leap. But as we get more followers, remember, the 1% of your followers are going to be the ones that buy, that call you, that hire you. So the more followers I get, the 1% of 12 followers is how much? 0.1, round it up to 1. If you've got 100 followers, the 1% is 1, maybe one sale. If you've got you know 500 followers, that's 5. And I'm just being very pessimistic because this, the studies show that, that you can, you can have 10,000 followers, but it doesn't mean you're going to make 10,000 sales, more like in the 1%. So the more of the followers and activity you have, the better. And you may be a superstar, and you have 12% CTR. Well, still, 12% out of 1,000 is not that much. So that's the second big tactic right there. The first one is you're going to search a little bit blindly, a little bit randomly in terms of these keywords. The second one is you're going to focus in a little bit more by first identifying big accounts related to your topic or your industry or your brand. in your space. And for a third one, 
take advantage of hashtags. So keep up to date with trends and hashtags. Identify relevant accounts. And that one is either or of these, either finding regular people, regular accounts to connect with, or finding a, a they call them influencers, an influencer account. A big account is an influencer account. Find an influencer account to then do the rest. So this is a variation of the other two. Identify relevant accounts, so influencers, or regular users. And interact with them. Same as above, and I'll show it in a moment. This is where hashtags come in. So uh, if anyone would like to venture, what is your definition? What's a hashtag? Anyone have an idea? It's a keyword you can use for your poster product. Yes, it's an active keyword. It's, an, it's a clickable keyword that you can use to reference your product. So uh, regular keyword not clickable versus hashtag clickable. Both identify what your posts are about. Both are useful, but oftentimes hashtag might be more powerful, as I'll show how in a moment. But both of these are ways for, for you to sort of set what is the topic of this tweet. I'm going to tweet uh, sale this Saturday uh, on all cookies use this coupon code, whatever, hashtag cookie sale. So I put the keyword of cookie sale as a hashtag onto my tweet to identify what it's about. And it's also active and clickable. I'll show that exactly in one moment. But this is a way to help you reach the right audience. And hashtags are most famous on Twitter, but you can also use them on almost every other network, although they're not as famous. Um, I would say the order of importance of them is, is probably uh, Twitter and Instagram. Those are the two where hashtags are the most important. You can use hashtags in Facebook, but they don't seem to have been that relevant. I don't really see them that often. Uh, I believe you can use hashtags in Pinterest, but again, they're not as relevant. You can use hashtags in YouTube, but they're not as relevant. So just a short answer, which I'll get back to. Yes? Sometimes I see the at sign used instead of the hashtag. Where is that? That is a mention. And uh, let me come back to that in a moment. So we'll do that versus that. Come back to that one moment. So hashtags, most relevant in Twitter and Instagram. Less in Facebook, YouTube, Pinterest, etc. Oh, uh, I think also Google Plus. What's that? LinkedIn, I think, is hashtags now, too. Hmm, OK. I guess LinkedIn is trying to do it as well. LinkedIn also recently added like cute stickers and stuff, just, oh. like, just like other networks. Mm -hmm. Well, those, those uh, LinkedIn cute stickers are very professional because it's like little cats in business suits and stuff. <laughs> OK, so very briefly here, um, at is used to mention another Twitter account. Not always just Twitter, but another account. And then hashtag is used to add a topic keyword to your tweet. So if I have something like at VMC Inc, that, that is an account on Twitter named VMC Inc. If I've got at, what was it, UC San Diego, my tweet 
is going to mention, is going to alert that account if I use their at name, their username. So that's where they would get a message that says your, your account was mentioned by yeah. the bakery. Yeah. But is that a linkable? Is at UC San Diego linkable? In other words, can my followers click on that and go to UC San yes. Diego? Yes. Okay. It'll go to their home page on Twitter. Okay. But they'll also, okay. But if, but if I do a hashtag of UC San Diego, it would be a link to them? It would not, not be a link. It would not be a link to them. It would be a link to all examples of tweets that use the hashtag UC San Diego. So if you had chocolate chip cookies. Okay. Exactly right here. Hashtag chocolate chip cookies. That would be linked to every other tweet that also uses that hashtag. But could you hashtag Bill's Bakery and link to their bakery? Yeah. If, yeah, you can link to their bakery by having their address. Okay, but not but not with a hashtag. Not with a hashtag, no. The hashtag's purpose is linking all content with the, the content, same. Not not the website. Not the website. website not their, their, not their profile, no. Oh. It'll make more sense if I do it right here. So to actually show how that would work. Um, what I'm saying about this tactic, when I'm looking at, when I'm on my Twitter account, on the left side usually there will be trends for you. There's something here, and there's something here, and here, and here. Hashtag, keyword, keyword, hashtag, keyword. Okay. So with the hash mark, it's a hashtag. With the keyword, it doesn't have the hash mark. It can have spaces. A hashtag cannot have spaces or other or other special characters. Let me, let me mark that too. Hashtag <coughs> has the hash mark, no spaces or special characters. Keyword can have spaces and special characters. The reason of why to use one or the other is again everyone sort of like decided to pick or to jump into a keyword where we're all in the same party, we're all in the same group, the same topic. So by looking at hashtag Goliath, everyone that is uh, tweeting about this TV show, I guess, hashtag Goliath, um, shows up here. So one minute ago, Cherry wrote this, and she put that hashtag. Two minutes ago, El Septimo Arte wrote this and put the hashtag. Jessica Carter, three minutes ago, wrote it and put the hashtag. So everyone using that hashtag you see is all linked together. Are you streaming Goliath? And then you can vote. This person simply then wrote, hashtag Goliath. So everyone is all linked together on, on a keyword, on a hashtag. And a hashtag has to be, notice here, hashtag now watching. So I could then follow this hashtag. If I click on that, everyone that used the, ha the hashtag now watching will show up here. And that's going to range all over the place from this movie, that TV show, that concert, whatever. So. I'm sorry. So, on the example that you just had, the second hashtag that showed up was hashtag Greg Davis. So, what what I see is what looks to be misplaced hashtags on postings where people are doing, you know, build a, you know, build a, the beagle, build underscore the beagle, and it looks like people are trying to promote their site by using the hashtag. When if you go to maybe the guy only has nine followers or, or something like that and, and and it's not they're 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 putting that hashtag improperly is that is that a, is that a thing or is that something that I just don't understand no that you uh, you've got it in terms of yes these things can be abused but, but people are thinking that it's linking back to their to their page or their their presence when in fact all it's doing is sharing 
a common no i i think or... they are trying to get self promotion okay. i don't think they're doing it incorrectly in terms of I, they're not trying to link back to themselves or their site they are trying to be part of the conversation they're trying to be part of the zeitgeist of like i also care about greg davies i also am now watching i also am this so they are trying to do the self-promotion. They're trying to get in on the conversation of this topic. And what I'm saying about it being abused, well, yeah, nothing's to stop you from putting nothing's to stop me from putting 20 hashtags that don't relate at all. I'm gonna put Super Bowl, I'm gonna put World Cup, I'm gonna put hockey, I'm gonna put everything, but I'm a bakery. You know, I'm gonna jump on a hashtag that's hot at the moment, but it has nothing related to my topic. That's what's not gonna work. Why is someone gonna care about your products or your tweets when you're not even really caring about the topic? You're just jumping on the bandwagon of a topic. That's the dark side of it. But the idea is I want to use and identify hashtags related to what could be most relevant to me, not just be a me too kind of thing that won't help. The, um, the idea here, um, keep up the trends and hashtags, identify the relevant ones, and then take advantage of them. Uh, let me go back to another example, back on home. Okay, so the Lakers. It's not a hashtag, but people have been writing um, the Lakers into their tweets. Uh, so it's confusing in terms of, well, if I click on the Lakers, it does show me a bunch of tweets just like a hashtag, but it's not technically a hashtag. If you notice, people have simply mention the word it's sort of like the one the ones that are keywords are like what Twitter seems to be identifying what people are talking about organically hashtags are often those that people want to be part of the bigger conversation and linked to each other they're trying to join a larger discussion I, I consciously put hashtag basketball to connect with all of those tweeting about basketball Whereas here, this one is tweets about the topic, but they're not perhaps trying to jump into the same big conversation. Keywords are often organically created or uh, identified by Twitter as to what's hot at the moment. Hashtags can be forced into being popular. You can buy popularity in all of these networks. You can buy visibility in all of these networks. You can pay for your tweet to appear more often to people. You can pay for your Facebook post to be shown to the right people, which is great because in the real world I put that billboard on the five and I don't know who will see it, people driving by. But who I want to see it are those that need a plumber. So if I could only have my billboard floating in front of someone that suddenly their pipe ruptured. <laughs> well, in the digital world, in online marketing, we can have that to some degree. We can, and we will be covering it throughout the course, we have the ability to target or boost or focus in onto a demographic that would really care most. I'm going to be posting tweets about my baked goods that I sell, my cookies and birthday cakes. Well, I want these to appear most often to the people that that care about cooking or baking and food and such. And we're able to do that because these social networks, for good or for bad, they have so much information on us. Now, as a consumer, let's say, full disclosure, as a consumer, I feel these networks have way too much information on us. On the one hand, I don't want to blame the victim, but on, on one hand, we give away so much information. Here's what I'm having to eat today. Here's where I'm visiting today. Here's what movie I've seen today. We're giving them so much information because we think we're only sharing to our friends and family. But all of these networks are a business, and therefore they are capturing and storing this information that we have agreed to when we click on the little agree button that no one reads. And so they have all that information. Now, on the opposite side as a business, I love it. 
as a business, then I know who's interested in cookies, who is visiting San Diego from out of town, who does this, who does that. As a business, I love that because then I can identify that to help my business. So that's the sort of dichotomy nowadays. It knows a little bit too much of us as a person, but great, as a business, I want to know as much as possible. I don't want to spend $1,000 on a billboard on the wrong sidewalk. I want to put it on the correct sidewalk. If I know where my customers are, I'll put it where my customers are. In the digital world, I want my tweets, my Facebook posts, my Instagram stories to go to the right people, so I can often pay to reach the right people. And we'll cover that a little later, after we cover more, most of the free stuff. So, what other trends are there over here? Father's Day, Matter, Matter de Mode, Chris Hardwick, Paul Manafort, Diego Costa, etc. And you can change these to show me what are the trends that are happening in Las Vegas or Tucson or wherever my demo, where, where my target audience is. Right now, it kind of tries to show you trends that everyone seems to be going on about, but you can set a location, show me trends on a specific area to find the right audience. I think for the moment we'll, we'll wind down the lecture in just a bit. There's a lot to think about, a lot to uh, to try to put into practice. Uh, we'll do a little bit of open lab time if you want to ask individual questions or try it yourself. The class ends at 1. When we come back next Friday, uh, we will look at another network. We will look at similar concepts with another network. We'll come back to ideas of Twitter, look at new stuff, come back and forth, because it's all related. Uh, people often ask me, okay, short answer, uh, do I need to be on, on all of these networks? Short answer is no, be on Facebook. Long answer is this three month long class, because uh, Facebook is the biggest network, but I don't cover it until day three. It is the biggest network, but it has pros and cons, it has special considerations. So after I, I cover social networking and digital marketing in a couple of different ways before, then when we get into Facebook, then we will see what are the pros and cons. Do I, does my business actually need to be on Facebook? No, my business needs to be on Snapchat. I need to be active on Twitter and Instagram, but not Facebook, or maybe only Facebook. So uh, we're going to cover a lot of networks. We're going to see them from different angles, and we're just going to keep learning little by little general questions on what we've talked about so far today? Can you just type into the um, search bar trends? When you go to home, uh, you should see trends on the left column. 